Hey, I'm Dave Watkins, Watkins Films. Today we're going to take a look at the new Paramount Presents release of Chinatown, starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway, directed by Roman Pulowski from a screenplay, a fantastic screenplay by Robert Town. Now, this is a 1974 hard boiled detective neo noir film, it takes place in 1937. Uh, the political mystery behind the movie is loosely based on events that took place at the turn of the century about a water dispute in L.A. Now, this being a 1974 movie, it came out after the production code had ended in 1968. And for the purposes of this movie, that means the villains can now get away with murderous, nefarious deeds without having to be incarcerated or killed off by the end of the movie. Now, that might put a bad taste in some people's mouths, but it will add an element of surprise of the events that take place at the very end of the film. Um, so Jack Nicholson plays a detective here who is in over his head. He goes into a simple assignment, and the more he investigates, the more um, truth he starts to uncover until he puts himself and those and others around him in danger. Now... His performance may be similar to Bogart's in the, the type of movies he made back in the 40s and 30s and 40s, but he does put his own Jack Nicholson-like spin on it, and he is well-directed by Roman Pulowski. He's able to get a very subtle performance, but he's also some, some internal anger issues and, and the complexities to the character. Now, F Faye Dunaway here is amazing. Um... I appreciated her performance a lot more upon this viewing than I have in the past, but she is an emotionally damaged um, femme fatale type who was sexually abused as a teenager, and so she brings a lot to it. Um, now, John Huston, who directed The Maltese Falcon, plays the main antagonist in Chinatown, um, and also um, James Hong played the main antagonist in Big Trouble in Little China, appears in Chinatown as well. Now, those expecting something along the likes of Big Trouble in Little China, I would change your expectations to something closer to the Maltese Falcon because this movie, though called Chinatown, has very little Chinatown in the movie. Only the last eight minutes or so take place in Chinatown, but there is some dialogue in other parts of the movie where Chinatown is talked about, and we will look at that later, but within those lines and the very last scene of the movie, we can see the deeper themes of the movie, and the fact that they called it Chinatown, it must have some importance, right? Okay, well now let's take a look at the packaging here. We'll do this quickly. So this is a Paramount Presents release, like the other ones, it opens up like this. Here we have the poster for Chinatown, the original poster. Unlike here, where we have um, Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway on the cover, which I actually like both of them, this this lends itself more towards um, more Chinatown, which is only in the movie at the end. Um, on the back, we have Jack Nicholson with a bandage on his nose, the same back on both sides. Um, this is from an important scene in the movie where the character is injured. He has his nose cut open, and then he has to wear a bandage for a large part of the movie. Now... Um, this is an interesting thing that happens because, you know, the character is injured on screen and then you see the repercussions of it for a long period of time during the movie. And you just kind of feel the pain of having to deal with, with this sort of situation on your nose. Um, some people actually thought that he had really gotten his nose cut because the special effect looks so convincing when it happens. Same cover as the other one. On the inside, we have um, a 4K version of the movie and... A Blu-ray version of the movie? No, not really. This is The Two Jakes, which is a sequel to Chinatown. And I think it's really cool that they included both movies here in this set. Some people may be disappointed that you don't get a Blu-ray of Chinatown if you wanted both of them. Because um, sometimes people, may, they may not have a 4K player, but they want the 4K upgrade on a Blu-ray disc. And that's not what happens here. But you get The Two Jakes instead. As far as the transfers of the movies... Um, I'm going to talk about the two Jakes first. Um, now, this is the first time I've saw the two Jakes, and it does continue the story. Uh, it did not do well in the theater. It was released in 1990. Transfer here is on Blu-ray. It is a, a, I believe it's a, a upgrade from a 4K master, maybe, but it doesn't 
that doesn't have any cleanup on it. There's, you do see a lot of grain in here, but every all the details seem to be intact behind the grain. For the movie Chinatown, um, there is a 4K restoration of some point, and there does seem to a lot, be a lot of grain cleanup. So even though everything looks a lot more in comparison to the two Jakes, everything looks a lot more, um, I guess, sharper. And like if you, there's little, there's very little grain. Everything looks very sharp, but I think some of the detail is missing in the on the faces because of this. The the coloring looks nice, and the black levels also look very nice. When you're watching these movies, even if there is something done to it, whether whether it whether it be like the you know the grain's been taken out, or with the two Jakes, you have a lot of grain. Well, you're watching them is when you get involved with a movie, you kind of forget about all that after a while. You forget about the quality after a while, as long as you're able to to get into the movie. All right, now let's get into it. Why is Chinatown called Chinatown? Now, before answering that question, I'm gonna have to go over some of the movie, and I'll try to do it quickly. But so Jack Nicholson plays a very cynical private detective um, who typically works low risk cases. It most mostly involving husbands and wives hiring him to investigate their spouses who are being infidels, who are cheating on each other. And so he goes and he busts them. He brings back the photos and that he gets paid. But during one of the investigations, um, a lady presenting herself as Evelyn Mulray, uh, the character played by Faye Dunaway, comes in and hires him, but it's not her. And he become, and then so she hires him to follow her husband, which is really Faye Dunaway's character's husband. So he, he follow, he's basically tricked into this, and he ends up um, taking some pictures of, of what appears to be an infidelity situation with the husband. And then later on, the husband is murdered. The real Faye Dunaway shows up, and um, she threatens to sue him and all this. So the, he's, uh, his reputation is kind of on the line. So he has an out. He can stop the investigation at this point. He could walk away. But he continues on because of his reputation. He wants to make sure. And he's also somewhat intrigued by the political stuff going on behind all of this. Um, but he, until he gets into it further, he goes to investigate, investigates this water um, diversion situation and at night and he, and he discovers what what seems to be like you know it seems to be a political scheme with the water and some thugs show up and and one of them cuts his nose open so he has he has a very serious injury with his nose it, and the effect looks very convincing when it happens so he spends a lot of time in the next part of the movie probably a good half an hour of the movie or more where with a bandage on his nose uh, which really shows you the, the lasting effects of this encounter. Um, now, again, he could walk away from the case after having his nose cut, but he cho he 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 chooses. He is very angry about this happening, and he at this point he want, he's really wanting to find out more about what's going on. Uh, eventually, like Faye Dunaway's character, and they end up um, going to a, a retirement home. Where they found out all the all the people who were there working there, or not working there, all the retirement people there are are own the land um, through some kind of a scheme, but they don't realize that they do. And those thugs show back up, and this time he beats them up, and they escape. Now back at Faye Dunaway's home, um, now I'm going to paraphrase some of this dialogue, but she asks him, "Have you ever been through something like this before?" And he says, um, "Only when I was working in Chinatown." And she's like, what did you do in Chinatown? And he says, as little as possible. Now, Chinatown here is a very dangerous place full of, um, you know, there's probably a lot of, lot of type of dirty dealings going on, a lot of drugs, a lot of, and plus, since it is, they are Chinese, he doesn't quite understand the language. He's out of his element and he doesn't know exactly how, how to proceed with things. And, you know, and the crime is so bad there. He, if you get involved too much, you're either going to get hurt yourself or someone else is going to get hurt and this is revealed even further after in his character and Faye Dunaway's character end up um, in bed together and so they're having a discussion after this and she's really pressing him more on the Chinatown getting him trying to get him to open up so she can know more about him and he uh, he says that he he was a police officer who wore, sometimes wore a uniform but he, he I guess he got involved with the girl that girl at that time he tried to help her, and she ended up getting hurt. 
um, from the look on his face, it's not gone into any further past that because the screenplay intentionally cuts it's something. They, the phone rings and they're not able to continue the conversation. But from the way that he's acting about it, she was either very severely hurt or maybe even killed. But this gave a lasting effect to his character. It, it probably caused his cynicism. From the talk about what's going on here, I think that he may, at the time when he was a, an officer in Chinatown, he's probably an idealistic uh, officer who had who was probably out to, to defend the greater good and he was burned and and from there he decided to kind of take a step back and stay out of it as much as he could um here obviously he's on a case where he is back into what he what it was similar to the events that happened in chinatown now let's get into the last scene of the movie now before i do that if you haven't done so already go ahead and like and subscribe but I'm going to give you an opportunity not to hear any spoilers. So spoilers start now. At the end of the movie, um, Jack Nicholson's character ends up in Chinatown where Faye Dunaway has taken her daughter. They're trying to escape, get out of town, and he's going to meet them. But the uh, the cops are telling him, and her father has also figured out uh, who, who is the antagonist. He, she's trying to get away from her dad. Um, so they all end up in Chinatown, and... And then the father tries to get the daughter, the daughter back, the granddaughter back. But uh, Faye Dunaway's character jumps in the car with the daughter and tries to drive away. The cops shoot at him like it's some idiots, and they accidentally kill Faye Dunaway's character. Now, none of this would have happened had Jack Nicholson's character walked away earlier in the case and not gotten so involved. Uh, and this is this is a very this is China. They're in Chinatown, so the cops. Tell Jack Nicholson's private detective um, to leave. They tell him to go ahead and go. And Jack Nicholson, one of Jack Nicholson's business partners are with him. And he starts pulling him away. And he says, relax, Jake. It's just Chinatown. But uh, clearly it's not just Chinatown. He can walk away but and it could end up in the papers where, where, where it could all be ignored. But it leaves a lasting emotional effect on Jake Geddes, Jack Nicholson's character, and it goes back into the 1990 movie. He still hasn't gotten over it. Now, before we end, I'm going to take a look at on the inside cover of, of the movie. Um, there is a, a quote here. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Now, the screenplay writer, Robert Town, uh, he describes uh, really the metaphor of Chinatown as the futility of good intentions. Now I think that really sums up, and he's the he's that's what his intentions behind the movie were to show you the futility of good intentions. So I urge you all to relax. It's just Chinatown, and if you could like and subscribe to the video. See you next time.